Hey everybody, Delisa Hawking here, fifth generation psychic medium, CEO of Spirit and Spark. I come to you about once a month and bring on some of my favorite psychic mediums and we take a look at different uh, celebrities that have passed away. We get messages from them and then we also do live readings for those that are tuning in to our live broadcast today. So for everybody that's joining us live um, from all of our different channels, um, as well as those that are going to be catching the replay, welcome to the show today. This is Mysteries with the medium. We're going to be diving in right away to take a look at Joan Rivers and what she'd like us to know. And then we're going to look at Kurt Cobain from Nirvana. We'll do our audience readings. And then there's a bit of a controversy around JFK Jr. Did he die in that plane crash? Is he still alive? We're going to find out today. I think we might have some interesting information that comes up about it. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring my co-hosts on. We have um, Maria Howard, Michelle Snelling, Lisa Gunshore of Buddhist Biohacker, and Jasmine. All right, let's bring everybody on. We're going to jump right in to Joan Rivers. So who? Yeah, say hello. We're going to introduce ourselves in a minute. Um, yeah, wave hello. Um, okay, and live viewers, let us know where you're tuning in from today, city and state, so we can say hello to you. So who wants to start with Joan Rivers? Who was getting like a hit on Joan? Michelle, go for it. I can start. Um, <laughs> it was really interesting because... She came in and immediately I just felt like really tired, really beyond exhausted. And um, when I connected, you know, when when with her energy, it was just tired. And then she was just talking to me a little bit about how she knew too much. Like she she was allowed. She told me that she was allowed into the inner circle really early on. And then they. And she literally went, they um, regretted it, regretted allowing her into that. Um, she had, she was sharing with me that she had a few near death experiences. And I don't mean like a thing where you die and then you come back, like where she almost died or, you know, was in really scary predicaments, a few of those, but she escaped death. And then she told me that she was ready to go, but her only regret is her daughter and her grandson because her daughter now lost both of her parents in a really tragic, traumatic way. And she's worried about the lasting scars those will have on her. Um, and when her, she knew that her end was coming and because and the, she told me, I made a comment on the red carpet. And the minute she said, I never had a filter. I never worried about it. She said, and then the minute that this comment came out of her mouth on the red carpet, she knew she was done in some way. And, um, and she said it was about somebody big and I really hesitant to say the name. I, so anyway, um, but he's, he's really popular in a, nice guy so anyway um and she had a bad feeling about this surgery but she ignored it because she'd had so many surgeries before and always um been fine and her she's told me that her daughter asked her not to do the surgery but she didn't give any credence to that as well and then i keep hearing the name sasha so i don't know if that has something to do with her or her family i don't know but I was the whole time she was coming through, I was hearing Sasha. So, wow, Marie, did you want to talk? Funny. Oh. Sorry, oh, no. I was just gonna say, like, she wasn't funny, she wasn't like cracking jokes, and she was serious. So, sorry, Maria, thank well, you. all right. No, thank you for sharing that, Maria. Go for it. Yeah, you know, it was funny because as I was sitting here, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, she just comes through like that personality that we knew, this vivacious, this loud, this, she came through with just as like, oh my gosh, I couldn't keep it up anymore. And she knew that life was just happening. And, you know, like you were saying, Michelle, she was invited in and they they didn't realize what the impact was really going to be. And she was one of the first of her kind. And as much as she loved it, it was hard for her to keep up with it. And it just towards the end just got exhausting. And again, like you said, she knew that something was going to happen. She just didn't, 
it's not that she wanted it, willed it or anything else. It just, she just knew she had this connection with herself that she knew that this was going to happen. Um, she did, she does come through and it's funny because she says, you know, we all take life too seriously. And that's one of the things that she really focused on was just like, don't take life too seriously, please, you know, laugh at yourself, but don't take it too seriously because every day we're being challenged in so many different ways. And she's just, she comes through full of energy at this point though, because she's that tiredness is gone from having to keep up with everything and everybody. Um, but it was definitely about, she she knew when she stepped into this world, it was sort of out of her control and she just had to continue that pace. Is that a kick? She just keeps telling me she just had to continue that pace, but don't take life too seriously is what I keep hearing from her. So. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Everybody watching, can you do us a favor and just drop a comment and let us know what you think about Joan Rivers? Um, do you feel connected to her? Do you feel like, She's got a message from the other side. Drop it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll select a few to, to show up on the screen during today's show. Okay, so I'm going to go to Lisa. Lisa, what do you have? You know, ditto to both Michelle and Maria <clears throat> and what you're saying. I actually, it came through pretty strong that she had an astrologer tell her not to do the surgery. I actually felt very strongly from her that she was showing me images of an astrology chart. She was like, I had a damn good astrologer kind of energy is what I hear from her. Um, she knew she shouldn't go. She knew what she had said, like what Michelle is saying. She knew there were things that she had said recently that kind of sealed the deal. And I really get this feeling like, not that she didn't care, but she was kind of aloof. Like, I think she felt complete and like it was fine if that was what was going to happen. And I also kind of felt her crack a little joke, like better to go when she was asleep than to have it be some other way. Like she was happy to be out when it happened. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think what I get from her is just... Um, she really loved what she did, even though she knew things she didn't want to know. And she was always testing the boundaries, always wondering how far she could go. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, those are the things I want to add, I guess. So yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I love the part about the astrology chart. That's awesome. All right, Jasmine, what do you want to add that hasn't maybe already been said yet? Okay, um, so it's interesting because I get a whole lot of messages about um, her realizing that she wasn't young anymore. You know, it was like she felt that there was a lot of pressure and that there was like this wasn't ending and there was still a lot of pressure to be something where she's like, I already had my chance with this. I've already lived it out. And um, yeah, I got that just battling the wanting to be young again and knowing she already had such a beautiful life. Um, and then there is the double energy. There were people around her she couldn't trust. Um, and something I wrote about uh, money, um, there were people that were doing this for money reasons. It's like, I don't know about the, the lawsuit because I have 10 of pentacles here after the death, right? Uh, something about that being deception so, yeah, I'm really getting that that her, the people that um, were involved in the lawsuit did it for money, and there were lies involved with that. It was almost planned. Layers to the story, layers on layers. Um, Deb said she's amazingly funny, sad, lost. Now, Julie posted something, and I don't know what this means. Oh, Julie, you got it, girl. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Okey dokey. Um, so, anyway, that's up on your screen if anyone would like to read that. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I'll echo some of what's already been said, but when um, I pulled in her energy this morning, I felt like she was, she was laughing. She said she's entertaining on the other side, and she was joking with me about how she died. So I feel like she, you know, took it with a grain of salt about her actual passing. Um, 
she felt loved when she made people laugh, she said, um, and that she had to work very hard at the craft. And she said that some comedians today are lazy. Um, they don't understand work ethic. She also said, which was interesting because it already came up one time, don't take life so seriously. Um, she also shared from a very like kind of solemn heart space, similar to what I think Michelle was picking up on too, was, was just like this insecurity and like a wanting to be loved. I did pick up on a fear of abandonment. But before she exited, she said, please tell all my fans thank you. Like she was very generous and, and kind at the end. So, um yeah, I'm glad that she shared that. Okay, so now that we've gone through Joan, and if anyone wants to continue to comment, um, we can take a look at that as well. I just want to go around the circle and just do a quick introduction um, so everyone knows who we are, where they can find us. So, Maria, let's go ahead and start with you. So, I'm Maria, and you can find me actually three different places. You can find me at Psychic Mediumship by Maria. You can find me, of course, with Alyssa at spirit and spark and then also at feather sage and spirit my other site so a couple of things going on been busy been wonderful seeing lots of energetic changes coming up for the future for our we're heading into fall even though our weather is starting to change but looking forward to a new year upcoming maybe some peace some renewed stuff happening so that's what you can find me awesome okay michelle what's going on in your world where can people find you um, you can find me at michellesnelling.com. That's Michelle with one L, Snelling with two. That's my website where I've got all of my um, essential oil and salt products because I am the accidental aromatherapist as well as being a psychic medium. Um, I also have my YouTube channel, Michelle Snelling, which I would love for you to subscribe and join me. I have a show called Practicality and Magic, and I do things here and there throughout as I feel led. And right now I'm having a sale on my site. So everything is 10% off, including readings, if you want someone on one time with me. And that code, um, because it's an August or a Christmas in August sale, I always do a Christmas in July and I miss July completely. So the sale started last week and it continues through tonight. So the code is Xmas 10 and you can get 10% off even readings. So thank you. Awesome. Okay, Lisa, what's going on with you? Yeah, so um, I am Buddhist Biohacker. You can find me at Buddhist Biohacker YouTube or at BuddhistBiohacker.com. And I have a very special moon circle for all of my members tomorrow morning. So for all of you watching today, if you would like to be my guest in the moon circle tomorrow and you're not already a member, you can just shoot me an email at mail, M-A-I-L, at lisamgunshore.com and I'll send you the information. Wonderful. All right, Jasmine, you're up. Hey, I'm Jasmine. Um, I'm a psychic hey. medium and astrologer. You can find me at goddessjspiritualreadings.com. Um, I offer astrology readings. I specialize in predictive astrology. So I do love charts. Do, I do composites, um, transit readings. And I, I also use tarot cards and do intuitive readings. So yeah, just... Uh, all offered on my website. Cool. Yeah. And I'm, I'm Delisa. <laughs> yeah. I'm with spirit and sparks so spirit and spark.com. And we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. So make sure you hit subscribe and follow us in all of the places. And um, yeah, we have a lot of fun. We, we, I like bringing it all of us together for mysteries of the mediums. Uh, we, we talk about a lot of fun stuff that we normally just don't talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have already planned our next episode. So if I remember, I'll tease that before we <laughs> exit off of today's show. <laughs> okay, so next up, I want to talk about Kurt Cobain. So Kurt Cobain was the front man of Nirvana. And um, so I know that a few of you feel connected to him. And in the comments, we already have Wicked Love Media talking about a connection to Kurt Cobain. Who wants to take this on first? Anybody feel... You want to jump right in there. Lisa? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're putting it on me. You know, so here's the deal, guys. I really didn't listen to Nirvana, nor did I care about any of this. So this is kind of an interesting thing for me to look at. I mean, sorry for those of you who loved Kurt Cobain. I really don't know anything about him. Um, but I got a really distinct and specific message from him when I tuned into his energy. Um, 
I guess what I'll say is it was difficult for me to tune into his energy. I felt like his energy was really, um, the frequency was not something I feel connected to. So that was difficult for me. But the message that I got was about the threshold. And he specifically said he wanted to have a normal life, but he'd already crossed the threshold. And there was no way, oh, and I get goosebumps as I say that, he really wants to get this message across. Like once he crossed the threshold, there was no way to go into something different. And who he had become was not really who he wanted to be. And there was just no going back. So that was really what I got from him. And he used this word threshold multiple times. So I have no idea what the meaning is behind that or why that's important. But it was definitely like he'd crossed it and there was no returning. And he did want to have a normal life. I don't even know if he had children, but I feel like he had a child or something because what I'm getting from him is that, that he wanted to have like a normal house and raise kids and have a life and that kind of thing. And it just was not in the cards for him at all. So. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Maria, are you going next? Sure. Um, yeah, you know, I got a lot of the same thing. I feel like he kind of was young spiritually. And so he got pushed kind of into it. And by the time he could realize what was happening, it was out of his control. And I feel the same thing. He, there were so many people pushing things on him. I feel like I'm just being blanketed with so many heavy decisions and yet he really didn't know how to make these decisions and yet people were pushing him to make decisions and again by the time he realized what was happening it was just so overwhelming same thing i feel like he didn't realize once he started this path it would just take completely over and yes having a family as time went on realized that that was more important but he couldn't back out and yet he was living this lifestyle of just push, 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 and just another day, just another show, just another thing. And it just energetically, it just buried him is how he makes me feel. He's just like, I feel like I've just got weighted blankets on me and weighted blankets on me and just can't get out from underneath it. Is And now I don't know if anybody's even realized, did, has anybody seen that the baby that they used for the cover is now trying to sue them? You yeah. know, and, and he's just rolling his eyes on this one going seriously, like who's trying to make something now? I'm not even in body and yet we're still trying to pick at me is how he feels. It's just like, good God, one more thing. <laughs> so, you know, and I feel like he spends a lot of time and I think, I think it's a daughter that he has. He makes me feel like it's a daughter and he <laughs> spends a lot of time trying to guide her spiritually to make sure that she's getting the things that she needs versus kind of what's being pushed upon to her. So, and that's where he's really focusing a lot of his attention at this point, it feels like. So. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Jasmine, we're going to you. Okay. So I have a little bit of a different messages. It looks like there was somebody around him that was very manipulative. Um, and it, it's uh, someone he works with here. And I, I'm getting that there was a lot of heartbreak. He was actually trying to be sober and do the right thing, be fair and heal here. And there was somebody who was holding him back and had actually lied to him. Um, and he was going through this transformation. He had these all these big plans to really heal whatever this was. And this person, um, yeah, there was definitely some, what, you know, looks like some substance abuse issues with this other person. And it's almost like they offered him too much. And it's not really. Um, only thing I can get is that it's. I hear coworker. It's not coworker. It's like somebody in his inner circle that he trusted. But he knew that they had issues. Right. And he was really trying to do the right thing. He thought it was a new beginning. And he knows he screwed up. Hmm. There's a lot of deception here, this other person. I think this other person was jealous. I think there was a lot of jealousy. And they were just unhealed. 
and they were definitely holding him back. So, yeah. I love that we're all bringing like different layers to the story. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michelle, what do you have to add to this? Um, well, a lot of ditto in similar, but then some other things. So it's interesting because when you said we were going to do him, I was like, oh, no offense to everybody here. But, and I <laughs> thought, well, I'm just not going to connect with him and everybody else can take him. But he would have none of that. So from that day that you <laughs> said we were going to do him, he's been trying to connect with me. And I really resisted him. But I finally was just like, okay, fine. Come, let's hear what you got to say. So um, he said what, what I felt a tremendous amount within him was anger. This just, like this ball of fire is literally what I saw within him in his chest and his like core. And, um, and he, he really told me that he always felt helpless. Like he just felt helpless as a child, as an adult. And like everything was happening to him, but he had no control over anything. And he was telling me that there was a lot of abuse in his life as a child, as an adult. And it was verbal abuse. That's what it, it was mostly verbal abuse. And it was from adults. And so because of that, he had a really hard time trusting authority and really wanted to like push against it and rebel and which I think we all, you know, it came out in his music and music was an outlet. He said he wasn't really that into substances too much, but that the person that I believe Jasmine is referring to in those cards is, I mean, I'm just going to say it, Courtney, Courtney Love. Mm -hmm. He knew that the minute he met her, he told me, he literally said, I was like a moth to a flame. I knew I was going to get burned. I knew it was going to end super badly, but I could not help myself. Um, he had zero control with her, with himself, with her. And so, um, and, he, and he, he showed me like, when he met her, he had the whole flash of everything that was to come, their whole life together. And he knew what, but he couldn't help himself. Like I said, he kept saying moth to the flame. He knew it, it was bad, but um, he did, he was very clear. He said, there's lots of speculation about stuff. He's like, I took my own life. I was done. And he really wanted out and he didn't have, there was no way out. He said it was like a trap like a trap door. He, it was locked, sealed. There was no way for him to get out. And then, and then he was showing me twos everywhere. So I didn't, I didn't look anything up. So maybe when I'm done, I'll look that up along with the Sasha and Joan Rivers, but twos all over. But I just have to share if I can for one second, personal, a personal journey with this, because I want to thank you, Delisa, for choosing him and for inviting me to be on this because I have felt anger for him from day one. Since I was like, this is my era, grunge. You know, I loved grunge. And I felt anger for him from day one for no reason. And I didn't understand it. And I mean, anger, like I couldn't listen to his music. I couldn't whatever. And when he, that's why, you know, when, when you said, I'm like, oh, forget it. I don't want to deal with that. But then he kept coming and it like, I realized that all these years, it wasn't my anger. I was connecting with his anger and feeling it. And so I've really been able to, you know, like have great conversations with him and about some things he did that I didn't like. And, you know, when he was alive. And so it was, it's been amazing. So I thank you for that. So that's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, I have to put this up on here. You're going to love this, Michelle. Birthday is 220. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Michelle, that's pretty close to George Washington's birthday, wouldn't you say? <laughs> it, is. it is. And guess what? I didn't know that that was his birthday, but my nephew, who adores Kurt Cobain, his birthday is 220. Wow. 
Yeah. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, there's another comment here from Wicked Love Media saying, I believe he absolutely wasn't alone and begged to be left alone that day. Kind of feels like that energy of feeling trapped that it was discussed just a moment ago. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I got um, no foul play. I do feel like he is the one that took his life. Um, he said, not everyone around me cared. Um, they had their own demons to deal with. Um, he had a premonition that he was going to die young. So similar to what somebody else said about like having kind of the flash when he, when he met her, um, he had a love hate relationship with fame. And he said that he was feeling disassociated and out of body. Like he didn't feel completely grounded um, towards the end there, but he did confirm that now he is at peace. And so it sounds like we got a lot of um, lines of that story. And I love the, what you shared, Michelle, about um, your conversations with him and like making peace with his energy. So I love that. Okay. So what we're going to do now um, is we're going to do um, messages from the other side for people that are tuning in live. I just ask you, you comment once. Um, with the question. So this is communicating with somebody or getting a message from someone specific from the other side. So a great way of doing this is to pop in the comments and just say something like, um, you know, what would my Uncle Bob want me to know? Or is there a message from my Aunt Rita or whatever it is, but it helps us to cut into the energy a little bit quicker when we've got a focal point um, to go and take the energy into. So just comment once with one question and we're all going to go around the circle and, and pick somebody that we feel drawn to, a message that we feel compelled to share. And then we'll we'll do that a couple times and then we're going to talk about JFK because that's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> So um, I'm going to invite all of my co-hosts to start taking a look over in the comments there. And if anybody sees one right off the bat that they want to take, just let me know and uh, we will start doing that. So we're just going to give it a moment to have more comments uh, start coming in. Okay. Whew. Therese, I'll go ahead and take yours. Just give me a moment here because um, I'm just going to have everybody else give me who they're taking and then we'll get started. Can I take Carrie from Grandma Benny? Carrie, yes. Can I take um, Hope message from Aunt Jana? Jana, yep. I'll do Nadine. Nadine, okay. I'll do um, Jennifer, the message from her grandmother. Okay. Okay, we're all just going to take a second. And if anybody wants to start sharing first, if you've got it right there, we will. Um, otherwise, we're just going to tune into the ones that we picked and give us a moment to do this. I'll go ahead and start if you're good. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so it's coming through really strong. Her energy is very, she makes me feel like her personality was when she said something you needed to listen and that's how she's coming through right now her energy is very strong but she also has a sharp tongue but with a sense of humor and what i heard was and this is kind of funny but i and i've heard this before from other don't give the milk for free <laughs> she's funny like oh my gosh um but there has to be something this feels like it's more than just this is about knowing your worth knowing your value and it, this goes really across the board with everything between business and friendships and relationships this she's just really pointing out to know your value and don't let anybody reduce your worth know that you are so important and you're worth so much more than you're giving yourself credit for please know that she has strength coming forward with you and for you um and don't forget that and i'm going to leave you with that because that's her biggest thing coming forward for you perfect who wants to go next i can go um sure. 
Hope and your Aunt Jana. So immediately, Hope, I was seeing like roses and flowers, lots of them. And so I feel like that's a message for you in and of itself. But she's also wanting to um, acknowledge like a special occasion that's coming, like in the next two or three weeks, birthday, anniversary, a wedding anniversary, an anniversary of a passing, something she wants to acknowledge that. And then she's making me feel like she's given me this really big vibe of pioneer. Like she was the first to do a lot of things, it feels like, and maybe just in the family, but she was the first and she was not afraid to go out on her own. She was not afraid to do things her way. She was not afraid to tell it like it needed to be told. And so she's saying her message is don't give up yourself and your beliefs. <clears throat> don't give up your hope. I mean, your name is hope, but don't give up your hope. She's saying that a lot of times in life, it it feels like we can't go one more step. And then we go that one more step and we're at the top of the mountain and it's downhill from there. So don't give up, keep going, keep moving. And then I pulled a card um, from the spirit animal oracle just because i wanted something to val you know to go with it and i pulled canary in reverse okay which beautiful but this is all about don't be afraid to sing your own song this when it's in protection like this it's about don't be afraid to sing your own song your voice your way you've got that pioneer spirit within you as well from her and she's here to help you so i hope that helps hope Great. Jasmine or Lisa? I'll jump in. I, for Jennifer Tunney, you were asking about your grandmother and I actually felt called to automatic write, which doesn't happen very much on these shows, but I did in fact do that. So I have a very specific written message for you, Jennifer, from your grandmother. And she said this, you are remarkable. You found the gift of taking life in stride and remaining optimistic against the turmoil that has been handed to you. Your positivity is the key to your healing and the beauty of your own healing will in turn heal others. So that was the message. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. I love it. Ooh. All right. Oh, Jasmine. Yeah. Okay, Nadine. Um, this was a car accident, I see very clearly. And you are right, there was some hidden secrets behind this. Um, I see, you know, the family dynamics, the relationship here and her trying to leave. And um, it appears like she was happy she wasn't. She was on the process of leaving and was trying to escape this. And there was somebody trying to stop her. And it looks like for financial reasons in a home, it does appear that she did have uh, what looks like an emperor in reverse, an abusive man in her life. Definitely a father figure, or it could be the father of her child. I do see what looks like a child here. So, yeah. She, uh, she was healing and she was leaving this situation. She already had things in the works. what I got for you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I took Therese about her brother and I heard keep one vehicle. I feel like somebody in the family needs a car. <laughs> so he said, keep a vehicle and sell the rest. Uh, he felt very practical about it. Just like sell them, sell them, get rid of them. Um, he did show me uh, imagery of him on the other side, spending time outdoors and also, um, Symbolism for working with the hands, doing things, putting things together. I did get a bit of a cough with him. So I'd be really interested if at the end of life, if there was something respiratory or blockage with breathing that was happening, either like lungs or respiratory. Um, he did show me that he was with a dog, like a family dog. Um, he said, watch for a yellow, yellow butterfly um, as a, a signal from him. Um, 
he said, whoever is buying the house, he showed me a key um, and he said, ask him for help in, in having the, the house come together. Um, and he said, just be grateful for how far everybody in the family has come. He said, there, you know, there's challenges going on. It feels like there's layers within the family where there's some challenges and some things that need to be kind of reworked and, and reconfigured. But he said, you're going to get through it. He said that you guys are survivors, that you're going to make it through. Um, and I pulled a couple cards and, and they were speak with love, surrender the need to be stubborn and stead progress, which is noticing how far you've come and take it day by day. So I trust that that message from your brother was helpful, Therese. Um, okay, so let's do one, uh, I think one more round. We'll probably make it through before we gotta go to JFK. So who wants to take who? Who are you feeling called to? Um, let's see. I'll do Barbarella. The message oh. for her marriage. Sorry, Michelle. Oh, no, that's okay. I just, I lost it for a sec. Amy Domingo okay. from her grandma, Jenny. I'll do um, Anna about eight. You got, you're taking who? Anna about eight. It's uh, a. Anna about eight, okay. What does my mother want me to know about the decision on the next career I'm looking into pursuing? Oh, gotcha. Okay. Maria, who are you taking? I am going to say Deb's Mo is asking what her dad is saying. Okay. Um, and I feel like I'm going to pull some messages for Janice um, for Leona. So I'm going to do that one. Okay. Let's go and tune in. And then whoever has their messages, you can just start, start letting it loose. <laughs> um, I can go. I just need to make one more note. Okay, so um, Michelle or Amy Domingo, sorry, your grandma Jenny. The immediately when I turned tuned into her, I felt like this big huge need for um self-care and like and what this self-care specifically feels like this isn't like the typical self-care that we think of with like a a massage or a soak in the tub or anything like that this is love this is self-love like you need an infusion of self-love into your heart and um and compassion she keeps talking to me about compassion that um like she, she keeps, I literally see her wrapping it around you like a blanket. Okay. So you might want to do that, like put a blanket around you and, and, you know, visualize your grandma and like a, a literal hug and some compassion because this, this is really, really important. And the thing that um, she was talking about also is forgiveness. Like you've got this long list of things that you're holding on to, things that you're not forgiving, things that you're, um, that you're not forgiving yourself for, other people, and it just, it's time to kind of put it to bed. And the, and the best way to do that, the easiest way, because she's saying like, you get stumped with forgiveness because you feel like it's some specific thing that you're going to do, but forgiveness is just almost like something that we slide into or that we move into gently. It's not necessarily something that we do. It's just something that like the forgiveness grows more than the unforgiveness. And so she she's asking you to just allow compassion to be present in your life more and more. And then that will kind of help with that list of things that you're not forgiving. Um, and let's see, let me pull a card real quick. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Love this. The wasp in reverse protection. What are you still feeling stung from? Either somebody else, something someone else has done or something you've done. So there you go. All right, Marie, go ahead. All right. So I felt compelled to 
pull cards for this one too from the mediumship deck. So I have two things. The first one came up is I have a new understanding. And the second thing that came up is you are never alone. And in doing so, as I was doing this and drawing and feeling his energy, I had this like head pain and and what I was feeling was like things got so heavy and so confusing and almost like there was a little bit of frustration or anger and it just compiled his feelings. And now he's coming forward with a totally different way of looking at things. But please know that I feel like there was either miscommunications or misunderstandings, even though they could have been real simple. They felt like they were more complicated, but please know that you're never alone and he wants you to know that. Um, he supports you, he walks with you, but please know that there is no, what I wanna say is no ill feelings from his part. Um, he feels very changed, but in a positive. He's still the same person, but in a loving form. And whatever the head headaches or something going on in the head is definitely want you to know it's no longer happening. So I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you. I'll jump in with Barbarella and a message about your marriage you were asking. And it feels like... <clears throat> What I'm feeling, Barbarella, is that somehow your identity has been lost through the marriage or with the marriage. It feels like it's time for you to reestablish who you are, what you want. Um, even simple things like what's your favorite color and what do you want to do with your life? It feels like something's been lost in your own identity. And there's a lot of um, it may even be to what comes through is it may even be that you've lost, like you're not even sure who you are because of the marriage or you've changed and you're not sure how to be who you are today within the marriage. So I feel like the message is to go into self-exploration, to discover yourself and to learn who you are and the more that you go into yourself and understand who you are, the more clear you're going to become about where you want to go with the marriage and the direction of the marriage. But it feels like it's too foggy for you to make any black and white decisions right now. It feels more like it's about really becoming clear about who you are and what you want for your life. And then from there, you'll understand and know if it's aligned with you or not to continue to be in that marriage. So that's what I felt. It feels heavy. I feel like you're sad. I feel like you're emotional and I think it's okay for you to kind of shake out your body and get outside and go for a walk and just kind of take a deep breath with all of it. Cause you're carrying a lot right now. I feel. Thank you for that. Yeah, and the people that are getting readings, if you wouldn't mind just dropping a comment, let us know that your message was received. And if you have any notes about it, I do see that some people are already commenting. So just for our co-host, take a look at that and see what your confirmations are that are coming in. All right, Jasmine, last but not least, and then I'll go. <laughs> okay, so I kept hearing you have the whole world in front of you. Um, and she was apologizing that uh, she didn't leave behind much. She's sorry that she didn't have much financially to leave behind, but that you're a hard worker. You make a lot of healthy choices and that whatever whatever you decide, you, you know, you go after it. So she believes in you and she sees a lot of choices for you. Um, and I got this really weird message to stop fighting with what looks like siblings. They're still, they're younger than you. So children, you're in a fight with them. She wants you to know that you need to stop fighting with them. That they are heartbroken too. They're healing from a broken heart. Um, and yeah, you know, back to just, and really stuck out that you have the whole world in front of you. Okay. She's, yeah. Hate to cut people off. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. 
Um, so I took Leona, the message from Janice. I got that you're going through a transformation right now and that it's important that you let the past go, like really, really set it down, let it go. Um, when I looked at Janice's energy, I actually saw this, like a wringing of the hands. Um, and she just kept wringing her hands, um, placing importance on that part of her. Um, she says that she loves you like a daughter. She sees your worth and <laughs> you can ask yourself, or maybe you already kind of think of it this way, like what would Janice do? What would Janice do? Kind of like that, what would Jesus do? She said, what would Janice do? So that came through. Um, and then I pulled three cards and um, lend a hand, which is a card about giving back to other people that when you give back to somebody else or you do something that's more of a humanitarian effort, you start to fill that in your own cup as well. And then these two cards came out, which I feel are hand in hand, surrender unhealthy relationships and an opportunity to forgive. And I feel that's what was, I pulled these after I wrote down the message. And so I feel like that has to do with letting the past go and surrendering that and allowing yourself to transform into what you know you deserve and what you know you're worthy of because Janice believes you're worthy of more is what I'm hearing to tell you. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, and thanks to everybody who's been commenting. We really appreciate the interaction. Um, we're going to talk about JFK Jr. Um, we know that, you know, or at least I think a lot of us know that uh, he passed away, or we perceive that he passed away in a plane crash um, with a few other people that were on board. And so we're going to take a look at JFK Jr., and then I'm I'm going to put my co my co-host on the spot after we talk about JFK Jr. and we'll kind of end the show with just what do you think of the overall energy right now? Um, is there anything that you feel like the audience needs to hear? You know, it's the first day of September when we're doing this live. Do you feel like there's just anything that people need to know in general for the collective? But let's talk about JFK Jr. <laughs> and everybody watching, we need you to comment on what you think is going on here. <laughs> Lisa, I think you just need to start, don't you? I'll start. So I want to give some context um, to my JFK Jr. opinion. So um, first and foremost, uh, his plane crashed right after Columbine. I think it was like two weeks later, a week later or something. So I just want to share, I lived next to Columbine. I was in the neighborhood that the SWAT team was searching for information and all of this during that day. And I had to show identification to a SWAT team member just to get into my neighborhood. So, um, and at the time I was 20 years old and um, living with my sister and my niece and nephew were very tiny at the time. They were like two and three, I think. And it was really intense um, because at 20 years old, while I have gifts and knew I had them, I certainly didn't know how to manage them at the time. And the angels in the neighborhood were thick and they were there for weeks and weeks. So when this plane crash occurred with JFK Jr., I was still managing the fact that there were all of these angels in the neighborhood. And there was, I mean, I returned a library book and Dan Rather was like on the street corner and I said hi to him. I mean, this is what kind of life it was at that moment. It was very intense and I didn't know it then. I know it now. But when I look back at the time, I really didn't understand that I was being shown uh, information on the controller energy of the planet and the narrative itself. I really didn't get that at the time. <laughs> But that's what was happening for sure. So again, didn't really know anything about JFK Jr. other than he was JFK Jr. I mean, I really didn't follow any of that storyline or politics or anything like that. So um, I was in my bedroom um, in the townhome, just at home. Um, I wasn't working that day and it came onto the television that his plane had crashed. And I heard a very loud voice that said, he is not dead. And I almost fell to the floor, which that doesn't happen very often. It definitely happens in my family, definitely happens to my mom where we are physically affected. Um, but that's one of probably three times in my life that's happened where I was physically affected by the voice I heard and by the energy. And I just knew that that was truth. And I went downstairs and, and told my sister, I know that he is not dead. 
Like whatever happened does not make any sense. And of course, I have plenty of context and many of you do now for what we think is the reasoning behind that. But um, that is what I think. So I do not feel I'm in I'm in the camp that I do feel he is still alive. Um, I will say that I do not feel he's going to come forward and save the world. Um, I feel very clear within myself that he did not want to operate in the public eye and made a decision to do that and, and to live a different life. So I don't feel that there's going to be some big unfolding. And I think we have to be cautious about what we feel about things like that and getting hooked into energy like that. There's a reason that he made the decisions that he did to keep himself and his family safe. So there's my story. Interesting. Jasmine, you're up. I mean, I second on that. Absolutely don't think he's dead. I got immediately the secrets, right? Secrets and having to have this new beginning. Now, listen, I also got that it wasn't by a selfish choice. It was like he really didn't have the choice to protect his family. I think that there were other things behind the scenes. Um, I don't think, I, I think it was a safety issue. I think it was a safety issue. Um, and I don't know why I kept, hearing that I'll never live up to my dad. Like he was very different in personality, right? He um, just know, like he was never gonna live up to that. That wasn't, that wasn't his path. It never was his path. He was never gonna follow that. And I do think there were some scary things that he had to go into a hiding to protect himself and his family. So yeah, I got that he's still alive too. Michelle. <laughs> um, I served that um, <laughs> from the day. I mean, I was, I saw the breaking news when they broke in and, and had the story. And I, like Lisa heard, this is not the truth. And, but at that point in my life, I wasn't really I mean, I knew what I felt, but I was just like, well, I don't know why. And I just kind of left it there. But um, in, you know, preparing for today, it was interesting because I definitely felt like this triad of people come to give me information. And it felt like his dad, JFK, felt like his uncle, RFK, and it felt like his mom. And um, they definitely said that he was being groomed. That was the word they used. He was being groomed and that it wasn't safe and that he really, all he wanted to do was live a really simple life. He didn't want to go, like he did not want to be in politics. He, I also got the feeling from his mom that he didn't want to be an attorney. Like that was forced on him as well. And so, um, but this was a necessity like they said there was no other option and i feel like his sis his sister-in-law and wife are with their in protective mode as well and i got the same message lisa like like anybody who thinks he's coming to save the day no he's you know i feel like they they said he like there was some allusion to he might be doing some things behind the scenes a little bit here and there, but it's really, really not minor stuff. I don't want to dimin I don't want to minimize, but it's not what is being said. So, and I also saw like for sure a tropical location. So, mm -hmm. interesting. The plot thickens. All right, Maria, what do you have? <laughs> Um, so what kept jumping out for me was his magazine. I don't know if you guys ever remember, he was publishing that magazine and it just sort of, and I feel like there were clues that were being put into it regarding his life. He kept telling me like there was little paths he was laying out to have this happen. Ooh, I just got chills all over my body. Sorry. Um, but he, he makes me feel like he was cut from a different cloth and the path that he was kind of getting put into was not his like soul journey. And he was not one that long term would be able to hold his tongue of the family or with situations from the family. 
And therefore, this was the most effective way to eliminate the questions or the burdens that he was going to be put into um, is how he comes across. And, and I agree. I don't think that he, he is still in body for sure that I do, but it was just, I feel that coming from his lineage of this information going, this was just not his, this was something that had to be done to take him kind of off that line. Um, because there's such a history with the name, there's such a history of turmoil and mysteries, and this was just one more of those things that I feel like he was done, this happened to protect him as well as protect the others, as strange as that sounds, but that's what I've been getting. Okay. I'm not turning uh, away on four psychic mediums that I trust. So I'm going to say things a lot. But here's what I actually did get. I got that he's with family. I got that um, there are hard fate lines in the astrology charts of the Kennedy family. And I've never looked at their charts. So I have no idea. But he talked about the hard fate lines. Um, and it's interesting because somebody just asked, um, I wonder how many kids he has. And part of the message that I got was tell people that I'm with the baby. So I actually feel like they ended up having a child or children together um, because he says that, that she was pregnant. She was pregnant. So I'm getting like the hit that they had a kid or kids okay. together. And, and I feel there was, a, there was oh. a rumor about that, Delisa, when that happened that she was pregnant at the time. Oh, that would make sense why he says I'm with the baby. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, we've got this. Marilyn Monroe babysat him. He had to go off grid by a certain age. Katie is, is mentioning that George was the name of his magazine after George Washington, which equaled freedom. Oh, there's so much yep. with this. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, the lies were told. Okay. Um, I'm going to just, we have about three minutes left. I just want to quickly mention our next episode is going to be on September 29th. And we are going to have like a music episode. We're going to look at Michael Jackson, George Michael, and Amy Winehouse. So that's who we're going to tackle on the next episode. Before we close out though, um, if you just want to quickly let everybody know again, just real fast where to find you. But I also, if you have anything to add about the energy that's going on right now and uh, anything for the collective that you want people to know. So, um, Maria, do you want to, do you want to start? Oh goodness. There is an energetic shift feeling happening. It's like our, our seasons haven't caught up to us. So I feel like this is now being pushed onto us. There's, as, I don't even know how to explain this. Um, I feel like we lost our summer to whirlwinds of stuff. And now this energy is built up and trying to push us into fall, which is usually a time of losing our leaves and reflections and starting over. And I feel like we haven't quite hit that yet. So it's kind of backing up against it. Um, if that makes any sense, we're just, the energy hasn't dissolved from what we usually do in the summertime, which is, have fun, have time off. And I feel like we just haven't hit that. And so we're heading into this time where the energetic field is building up and we have to learn how to shed some of that because we're going to be hitting the holidays, which I don't think anybody's ready for yet. Although some people are super excited for them. Um, I think it's just hitting us faster than we know how to deal with it right now is how it's coming across. So I'd suggest everybody take some deep breaths, do some clearing and release anything that does not belong to you because I feel like it's just bombarding us from every direction right now. So that's what I'm getting on my end. Okay, Michelle, I know you have to jet. Um, so Michelle, do you wanna give us your thoughts? Sure, thank you, Delisa. Um, so when I was sitting with the energy moving forward yesterday, what I kept getting is this um, real need to like clean, almost like spring cleaning, but ball cleaning. So kind of goes along with what Maria was saying. 
And that's what they were showing me. Like time is just kind of this weird thing right now. And we're trying to make sense of it with our human brain and our logic. And it's just impossible. So it's like, let go, but clean house. And that means physical. That also means spiritual, emotional, mental. So, and tie up loose ends. That was what I kept hearing yesterday was tie up loose ends. Make sure that like you're doing the things that you need to do for foundations. So mm -hmm. banking, um, you know, supplies, all, all those kinds of things. If you've got a business, make sure you're doing the things you need, whatever. But um, loose ends, tie it up and just clean house and don't try to control time. <laughs> Good reminder for all of us, for sure. Yeah. All right, Lisa. Yeah. So again, you can reach me at lisamgunshore.com or buddhistbiohacker.com. It all goes to the same place. Um, as far as right now, um, I have a very specific message for us to reserve our energy, to contain, to hold this month. We are going to need it for the next three months. So I feel like this is a month of self-care. Um, this is a month for going within. And we talk about going within all the time, but this is literally like you need to pull your energy in and nourish and replenish yourself. Um, make sure that you're getting plenty of rest, plenty of meditation time, good clean food, um, and not leak or scatter your energy around you because we will want to be pillars of strength October, November, and December. So in order to become that pillar of strength, we must pull our energy in this month. Beautiful. Jasmine, anything you want to add? Um, well, yeah. I mean, everybody's being confronted with old wounds right now. And, um, you, I mean, it's undeniable that there's a huge shift going on. There's more awakening uh, with the collective than I've I've seen in my entire life, right? Everybody is becoming spiritually awake. And in this comes out all those subconscious beliefs and thoughts. And I think that we are being attacked by these old wounds so that we can, you know, pull our energy back. As you said, pull your energy back, really reflect on that and let it go. Because it is only holding you back. You are being confronted with it so that you can release any attachment you have to those wounds any control that it has over you. And I think um, it is so that you let it go and you do have that strength for what is to come. And yes, there are huge energetic shifts, but they're beautiful. They're beautiful and it just feels chaotic because it's, it's a lot of change. It's a lot of being really awake and not just being in your own bubble, but seeing that as a collective, we are all connected and feeling each other, right? Feeling the universe. Um, and that's heavy. That's heavy. So I think if everybody releases all of these wounds, then we can come together and be stronger together. Do oh, yeah, that's that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a wild, wild west out there. Um, I would say if you're feeling like you're running around with your head cut off like a chicken, would you just slow down for a minute and breathe and and really just tune into yourself? Um, it feels like the energy is really scattered. Um, it feels very, very heavy from about mid-September all the way through October. Um, November feels a little wonky and leading up to the holidays and the crossing of the holidays into January feels really heavy too. So we're, we're in for a period of time where it's going to reveal a lot about what needs to be healed, about what to do next. But if you're not sitting still long enough to ask yourself those questions, it, it's going to feel harder than it needs to feel. Um, and all of us, you can come to any of us, talk to us. I, I know we do psychic work, we do mediumship work. You know, Michelle does her accidental aromatherapist uh, products. Lisa's got stuff that she's got going on on her website too for products and sessions. We, we're here. We, you can talk to us, you can request a session. We, we're here to help you, but you've got to be willing to step up and say, all right, I've slowed down long enough to ask myself what's going on and now I need to talk about it and sort this out. But we're here when you're ready. 
and um, we'll be back on the 29th all together uh, to do the music episode of Mysteries with the Mediums and um, to find all of us. We did it at the beginning of the video, but um, I know Mich Maria's got hers and her and her uh, line there under her photo. Michelle Snelling is michellesnelling.com. One L, one L and Michelle, two L's and Snelling. I know Lisa shared Buddhist Biohacker and her website as well. And Maria and Jasmine are also in the um, practitioner directory on spiritandspark.com. All right, did we do it? <laughs> I think we did it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in live. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye everybody. guys. Bye, everybody. Have a great month. Did you guys hear my phone going off? I think we're still live. <laughs> yeah, I think Delisa left. Yes, I think she left and left the slides. Oh my gosh. All right, well, bye everybody. <laughs> yeah.